Hey, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. So today we're going to be finishing that track I started, I believe, two weeks ago at this point. But what's funny is since then, you know, it's not funny. My autofocus is going off the charts for basically the rest of this video. Forgive me for that shot. All right, let's get back into it. I started messing around with some other stuff and I actually jacked my drums up, but it's okay. We still get the main idea across, which is this track here. Right, we got a cool little sample that we chopped up on the push. We got our grandma running the bass with that awesome spring verb. The OBX8, doing some stuff that we're, we tracked it in through the Zen. Some Nord strings and drums. Really, really simple, super straightforward. This is the perfect kind of place that I want to start arranging a track because I could add some more stuff later, like if I wanted to do a B section. But for now, I think what I need to do is focus in on these drums. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this part where our grandmother is just bumping beyond belief. Oh, and by the way, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on that later. And if I open up our syntax group, so I'm gonna go ahead and label this uh, kick one. Let's see. Yep, perfect. Okay, cool. So focusing in on this section here, on the syntax, let's go ahead and take our kick and I'm just gonna make it basically inaudible using the amp envelope. And this is gonna allow me to kind of bring in just enough kick from what I think I need. So just to get the point across, right? That's cool. And if I were to solo this, with this filter, there's all this extra noise on top that like chum, chum, chum. I don't want that. So what I've done is I'll bring this down, but then with the envelope, with no envelope, it's pretty flat. So I use the, uh, the envelope on the filter cutoff just to give it a little bit of like a click, just a little bit of a sound to help it kind of cut through the mix when we listen to everything as a whole. Oh, and pro tip, so we made this track in G minor. On the syntax, by default, it's always tuned to C, right? So that's here, zero. The synth engine, ew, you hear that, right? So check this, if we hit C here and we go down, we wanna to get to G, we go one, two, three, four, five. So I just need to tune this down five semitones. Uh, right there, and now listen to the kick. Dude, that just sits in the mix so much better. All right, so what other sounds do we have going on here? Let's listen to our syntax group. So this is cool. But I think it's a little too much going on, so. Yeah, I'm gonna lower the volume. This could be a little more hyped up, go to our second filter, or our first filter here, and let's just do a high pass, and then bring the amp down. Honestly, this style sounds like it's really cut through the kick. All right, let's hear that as a whole. Cool, so that works, right? But um, I wanted to, to label that syntax kick because I need to sidechain some of this stuff just to help it fit a little, breath, a little better. So we're gonna add a compressor to our grandmother here. Open that up, sidechain, sidechain from kick one. And you know what, I'm gonna just bring, this is my issue with Overbridge is that it records extremely, extremely quiet. But I know it's by design, so you can turn all the volumes up of everything and not actually clip it. But I wish there was a way that I can just say, can you just give me 20 dBs more of audio? But anyway, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna just turn up our gain, which is coming from our uh, kick. And this is just gonna affect the grandmother. All right, so now you can see that this here, you know what, let's go into, let's go into Gizmo, let's do it. So look and feel, let's set this to 150. Jeez Louise, that is huge. Anyway, you get the idea. I gotta get the monitor back in here, my bad. So now you can see that our uh, kick is getting a little higher up, right? So I'm gonna just start bringing that down. We'll try six. If we listen to just the grandmother. 
that's just going off the kick. Without it? It's right there on top, right? If we were to go and listen to this with just the kick. Let me turn this back on. Just kind of helps them fit a little more, right? And again, we need to decide which is which. I'm gonna go ahead and add EQ8 to our grandmother bass. And I'm gonna set this to 50. I talked about this in um, my mixing video, this one here, where um, you kind of have to choose which you want to be the main bass, the kick or the bass. Um, and in this case, I want the bass to be the kick. Wow, I can't believe I said that correctly. And the bass is not gonna be the main bass, so I'm gonna cut it at 50, and then I'm gonna go up to our kick, which was uh, here. I'm gonna just copy this, holding down Option, drop it on here, and I'm gonna just set this to 23, because below that, it's just mud. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna change um, much other than robbing you of some headroom when it comes to mixing, because it's gonna be taking up decibels. And you can see, on all of my syntax tracks, I actually have a utility of plus 20 decibels, and it's still quiet. So yeah, I wish I wish there was a better way of uh, changing that up a little bit. This here is our sample. Let me go ahead and name, name that sample just so we know. Peak, we can get that out of the way. Um, you know what? The grandma... Yeah, this is the grandma MIDI. I'll leave it there. We might need it later on. You never know. So where are we at now? And same thing, I wanna go ahead and set this to uh, minus 40 and just slowly start bringing it up until I find a comfortable spot for the bass to live. And I need to make sure that I actually put this loop point here where the bass's filter is wide open. So let's see. Yeah, that's cool, minus four. Because watch, if I go back to zero, it's just on top of everything. Way too much. Is there anything else that we can hear that's a little funky? I mean, the Nord keys are a little loud. What I can also do on the Nord keys, one of my favorite things to do with um, these string types of sounds, is just kind of do a fake band pass. If we go and listen to this, we'll turn this all the way up. Slowly bring it back until I find it necessary to get the point across. Look at that, totally down with that. So what I'm gonna do with four, cut that low. Give it a little bit of a bump, cause who cares? And I'm actually gonna bring this ahead of this uh, reverb. And this is already listening, doing a side chain from the kick, but it's actually not. It's doing, oh, okay, whatever, we'll go here down a little. So what happened there was this kick um, was actually the analog kick on the Syntact that I had in the original one, not this digital kick that I'm using now. But that's okay. We're going to just keep moving forward. Um, and I think that this kick actually sounds good. And weirdly, if I wanted to, I could add that analog kick as more extra sound and just kind of shave off its low end and give it more of just a crunchy um, high pass sound to uh, to accent the main kick that's already happening, but we can we can tackle that later. But right now we're doing pretty good. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this out of the way. So how do I want this track to start? Right, so that's the most important part. I'm gonna go ahead and select this part here, hit Command I, and that's gonna open up some blank space. I have this weird want to let's say. I honestly kind of like the way this comes in, maybe without this open hat. How about this? Yeah, I like that right there. So then on top of this, there's this weird part of this OB, the OBX8. I don't know what, what I was playing. Oh, I remember what I was playing. But there's this weird like textures in here. Listen to this. That's actually kind of cool. So I'm gonna just highlight this, 
Click and drag this over, hold down option to copy just that one section. Doesn't cut it, it just takes that part out. And I wanna just tie that in a couple times here at the beginning and we'll recolor this to kind of a lighter-ish blue. So let's listen to this, see what it sounds like. Yeah, that's cool. And then we'll go here and then bring in this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. This works. So this part's going to be um, kind of annoying. What I'm going to have to do is track in all the parts that are coming in on the syntax, right? So basically right here, I'm just going to hold down command and arm a bunch of these. And basically, I don't want to have to keep playing in the parts or the patterns. So I'm just going to record in, in their own separate tracks using Overbridge. Um, just like four bars so I can get some of the probability stuff and that will actually allow me to arrange these drums a lot easier just using Ableton instead of trying to play them in. So I'm gonna do that right now. You don't have to worry about this part. Uh, we'll skip over this whole section. I'll see you in a sec. Actually, while my other half records those Syntac drums, let me give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So in case you're not familiar, Squarespace is an incredibly easy to use all-in-one website designer, hosting platform, and so much more. I've been using Squarespace for ages, long before I had this channel for some e-commerce stuff, and I use it now. So when they asked to sponsor a few videos, I said, of course, let's do it. So it's currently where I host all my merch, like my hats, my shirts, sample packs and presets, and even a contact me page. It's honestly never been easier to get a professional looking website within a few clicks at such an affordable price. Some of my favorite features on Squarespace are the customized email links that expire within 24 hours, so when you're selling digital goods like music or videos or templates or anything like that, you don't need to worry about changing or chasing down the links in case they get shared around. Also, the website builder is awesome with gorgeous templates to start from that you can easily tweak to make them feel like your own. For example, I'm using the Event Horizon template on my website right now, and with a few clicks, I was easily able to add like a couple extra pages and really make it feel like mine. And trust me, I'd never be able to make a website look this good on my own. And lastly, all the extensions and integrations that Squarespace has with third-party companies that help you run your business or your brand. These can help you facilitate your shipping, product design, taxes, and so much more. It's crazy how simple Squarespace makes it. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in taking your site or your music or your artistry to the next level, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash rickytinez to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, I think he's done with the drums. Let's get back to it. All right, so we got our drums in. I'm gonna go ahead and delete I know I might need those later, but uh, whatever, right? We'll, we'll deal with it. We'll cross that bridge when it comes, just so that this session doesn't look this wild. And what I'm gonna do also is just go ahead and mute all these tracks here on the syntax so that there is no weird um, kind of like crossover in case I accidentally hit record arm. But with that being said, we have all our parts here. I could go ahead and label them, but for the sake of time, I'll label them later. I don't wanna bore you with that. There's that sound. Awesome. This is the one that I really need to know, up hat one, because this is the section that I want to only show up here. And if we listen to this stuff from the beginning. Cool. And then um, actually, oh, it was nine. Oh, it's eight, my bad. <laughs> it's gonna be eight. So there we go. We do this, we play back from the beginning. Awesome, we'll take this, and I'm just gonna copy paste this across a bunch. Basically, my tracks usually end up around five minutes, 20 seconds, so this is enough to work with. And then, yep, that's cool. We'll grab this whole section, which is basically the meat and potatoes of our track, right? And then maybe we can drop the kick out here. Okay, so a bunch of things are happening right here that uh, don't need to be happening. We, uh, I'm gonna cut that part out here. If we play this back, 
I accidentally cut a section out. You can hear that. So if I go here, I cut off the very first bar of all my patterns. So be careful when you're doing this and moving too quick, right? So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna drag this stuff over. We'll lock it in here. I want this pattern to continue. And I think at this little drop section, we can have the, the baseline come in and we're also gonna take the kick out and I'm just gonna hit zero. I used to delete a lot, but I like kind of like doing zero because I don't know, I find that I can then take this zero and like slowly slide it over here. So if I wanted to skip a kick, right? It's a little easier than deleting and copy pasting and stuff like that. So who knows, maybe you can find some help in hitting zero instead of delete. I know I did for whatever reason, it just clicked with my brain. All right. so. We're here, a little bit of an intro, dun, 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 dun. and then. Cool, that's cool. I'm gonna go to our OB. There's no, um, nothing on here, like no effects. And I'm just gonna go and add a filter, a little bit of resonance, go to our automation, open this up. And we're just gonna slowly fade this bad boy out. Go all the way down here. We'll do it across all these bars, that's fine. Put a little bend in here and let's see what that sounds like. And remember that this is a pretty high pitch or high frequency sound. So this is probably gonna be gone by the time it reaches this tiny little section here. And just to make sure that we're not losing ourselves of any um, decibels or headroom, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop that as well. So basically I'm just cutting off a lot of the low end that we might not even need. So let's hear what this sounds like now. Yeah, that works. And then on top of this, we need to start bringing in this sample. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste this here. Um, and our sample has this, the SP950 here, this filter, we'll start it really low and then we'll start bringing it up at the same time that the other one is fading out. And uh, yeah, we'll do that here like this. And we'll go like this. That way it kind of comes up a little faster than the other filter full going out. But when this filter is all the way down, it doesn't actually cut it all the way out. Oh, a little too fast. Okay, cool. So this is dope. I think we need to take out um, some of these hats as well. So I'm going to name this one hat two because um, we need to we need to give ourselves some energy. Is this neon insane green bugging anyone else besides me? Let me go ahead and change this to uh, ew. What kind of brown is that? I don't even want to think about that. Let's um. Oh, amazing! Look at that blue. That is. A million times better. I wish everything didn't just say audio a million times, but this is the world we've chosen to live in. So let's just, uh, you know, we made this bed, we might as well sleep in it. <laughs> so I also want this hat to kind of be out. And we can also get those claps out too. I believe these are the claps here. Let's see. Yep, that's a clap. Oh. Actually, this is kind of fun. So I'm gonna use utility on our clap section here, which actually we already have utility. So I'll just go and select this one here and we'll slowly fade our claps out all the way to zero. And I'll bring it in a little early. Also, if you are if you get annoyed that this constantly locks, hold down command and you can get um, basically uh, unquantized, uh, non-locking point pinpoint action. I don't know what it's called. Awesome. We'll do this. We'll let that one come back in. And we'll only let a couple of kicks come in. Let's do. Yeah, cool. We'll do like a little head fake, right? So. And then we can go boom, boom, put on boom. Yeah, or do something crazy here. I don't, I mean, that's. Don't follow my words exactly on that one, but 
You know what I'm saying? We'll just do uh we'll have this kick here, we'll put a kick here, put a kick there, here, we'll find a resolution. I'm just kind of putting these randomly right now. And then we'll go here and then here. This is gonna sound insane. I beg you to not judge me for I'm about to press play and it's gonna sound like a hot mess, but just give me a sec, All right? We'll get there. So let's listen to this. Yo, <laughs> that actually worked. A little bit of velocity here and there was gonna go a long way. So what I'm gonna do is uh, look at our waveform, which is non-existent, thank you Overbridge. And I'll bring this down a little bit, so. Dun, dun, da da dun. So this one could be a little lower. And then we'll bring this one a little lower. And then this one here a little lower. Awesome, let's try that. Yeah, cool, sweet. So that, that happened. And uh, we're gonna bring this here, this little section here, unzero that. And this is gonna come back in. And this should basically bring everything back in. And I've done this a couple times where this gets kind of annoying that you can see I'm trying to follow these big chunks of time, right? These eight bar sections. But then I'll throw in these random four bar sections and that's gonna come back and haunt me later. But I'll cross that bridge when it comes. And what I'm probably gonna end up doing, and I honestly should just do it now, is just select this section here, Command Shift and Delete and just remove that time. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna just do that. So here, let's listen to the breakdown now. Okay, okay, a lot of stuff is happening. The bass is coming in way too fast and uh, we lost some automation, here it is, on our filter cutoff and it opens up fully uh, that weird four bar section late. So we'll bring this in here and we'll say. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But this needs to come back down with the quickness because I don't like the way the sample sounds fully open. I want that to only be very specific moments. That way that part becomes special, right? It's not throughout the whole track. If it was throughout the whole track, it wouldn't mean that much. So let's do this. Let's see what this sounds like here. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna put a little dot here. If I zoom into the section, put a little dot there, do this and then holding down option. We're gonna bring this all the way down just to give it a quick, tiny, tiny little whip. And if I really wanted, I can do one of these and move this dot over, bring this up about here and really whip it down. Yeah, that's cool, I like that. So let's listen to it from this very last note. Oh, I want it to be lower. I want it to, the bass to be. And we can even bring this in a little more. What about right there? So let's see. Okay, cool, that works. Um, we have a delay on B and we'll use that. We'll, um, we'll select some automation here again. We'll select our send to B and I'm gonna turn this all the way up and we're gonna turn it all the way up for this last note as well. And we're gonna let this sound ring all the way out and we'll whip that down again. And we'll start fading this in a little bit. So let's see. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not working for me right there. I think the feedback needs to be longer. The delay track itself needs to be quieter. And we need a bit of a filter on here to band pass it. Yeah, that works a little better.
Yeah, that works. Now you can hear that our bass is just fully open, doing the most right now, and it actually sounds kind of loud, right? If I'm not... Okay, cool, so the bass gets quieter here. I'm gonna just copy paste that here and duplicate that. So same thing. Maybe this is the time for the Nord strings. Let's bring the Nord strings in. We also need a crash, right? That's cool. Yeah, I'm down with that. And at this point in time, you know what would actually be really dope? Is if we took our sample track, which is this one here. Why is our sample track named Hat 2? That is not at all what I wanted this to be called. I have no idea at what point in time did I do that. Um, what we're gonna do, SP950, we're gonna add the LFO module up in here. Grab this LFO, bring it over here, and we are going to map this to our filter. And we're gonna turn the depth down, and let's play it back. I want it to be kind of like a down saw. We want it to be synced up. Yeah, I like that. Maybe a quarter. Let's try up. Let's see what that does. Offset. Okay, cool. So I like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm only going to apply this after that drop that we had, which is uh, right over here in this section. So depth is down and we'll turn this up. We're gonna just bring this up a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm gonna bring this over here and let that slowly kind of fade in as this is doing its thing. Yeah. I want that to be gone. That there we go. That drives the energy. And then this one. We can drop this down a little bit. Oh, we'll take this part out, hat number two, and let these live on. And then this will drive the energy on during that one section after that little bit of a drop. Oh man, we actually kind of need this. Yeah, we need that to drive the energy. Well, now we can go and just take this section out. And then bring in the hi-hats. Cool, that's gonna do its thing. Um, grandma section, you can be dismissed. Oh look, our OB comes in perfect timing right here. And then our Nord, we can have our Nord uh, go away, right? We can have that go, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, right, 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 okay, cool. So this goes here, this threw me off, awesome. And what's our grandma audio doing right here? It's going way, way, way down, that's fine, because we can just duplicate that here. So that's falling down really quietly, perfect. Then our Nord, what I'll do with our Nord is I'll high pass this. All I'm doing is basically the DJ's job of slowly filtering parts in and out, but in a song level as opposed to like playing tracks and doing um, 
fading tracks in and out using filters, which is kind of how I DJ a lot. There, you hear that bass come back in a lot higher. And on top of that, we'll take this LFO, actually we won't listen to the LFO depth, what we'll do is we'll grab our filter and we will, um, oh, we'll just grab the offset. That's what I want to grab. <clears throat> Let's see, LFO offset. And whoa, what the hell? I've never seen LFO offset. It looks so insane. Why is it so detailed? I don't know what I just did, but uh, you know what I'm going to do instead? Since this thing is scaring me right now, I'm just going <laughs> to go to our sample. Dude, that looks nuts. No way. Why is everything else normal, but our offset's just through the roof? All right, so I just want to, I'm just going to overdub this because this just looks insane to me right now. So I'm going to just play from here. And we're just going to, this is the drop part right here where everything kind of falls out, right? And I want the filter to open up a little more. Let it ride up a bit. Bring it down a little. Okay, cool. That's cool. I dig that. We're going to get rid of these here. And I am going to leave it there. But what I'm going to do also is take our depth and bring our depth down by this point in time, which is that little second part. And not by a lot, just a little bit. I'm just adding tiny, tiny, tiny bits of movement because I think that that's going to create for a bit more of an interesting uh, track. <laughs> bring it down even more. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, cool. So we're here. One, two, three. I want to make it to here, right? That's kind of the last little section that I really want to get to. I'm just going to copy paste this here. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. This grandma, you know what? You are a goner. You're throwing me off. And this sample section is good to go. I can just copy paste that. Our drums are here. And now this is going to be where things get a little fun because I'm just going to go ahead and zero out a lot of this. So now our bass is going to stop. But what I think I should actually do instead is maybe do a bit of the opposite of this where I'm gonna take this and actually get rid of our sample. And since I got this kind of going haywire over here, what I'm gonna do instead just to make it easier for myself is just add an auto filter, turn up our resonance a little bit, turn this up all the way, get rid of this. And I am going to slowly but surely fade out our sample by the time we get here. So let's say we're here, right about here. section back in. And actually this whole section here, I'm going to just take this, um, this little like wood block sound out. Oh, that's the uh, effects. My bad. Where is that wood block sound? Wood block. See, this is why I say, uh, name everything. You don't waste so much time like I am. Um. What does it sound like without this? 
We need that. What about without this? Yeah, we can keep this going. We can keep this going. So we'll bring this stuff back in. It's kind of like a little cheesy breakdown. Whatever. It kind of works. I wonder what the Nord sounds like in this little section. Oh, you know what? At the end of this Nord, there's one. This is at the end of that video. I was just jamming. Yeah, Nord 5. Let's let's grab this and we'll go and uh, drop this here instead. And we'll put this here. This will be sick. So... Where do our drums drop out? Yeah, this is cool. This will create that tension. This slowly fades out. And then. I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna just crossfade these so that uh, nobody notices. And you can hear that that grandma audio is so unquantized, but I kind of dig it. Yes, a little like dance break. Oh, let's keep this part going. Then we can drop it into this low section. This is just the grandma audio, by the way. Keep this going. And then on this part, we'll bring the wood block back in. We'll drop all these open hats, right? We'll take this one out. We'll take this one out. Um, we'll take this section out. And, uh, and we'll even take those hi hats out here as well. So let's do this. And then we're going to bring the sample back in and I'm going to leave it there. Watch. Let's see. Let's see. I have a feeling that this is going to feel really good. So I'll drop this here. So this whole part of the section, this sample is basically gone. You can see it here. The filter is so low, but here we need to bring our auto filter all the way back up. So CC is just bringing this up. And then we can go in with this offset again. That's just doing the most for whatever reason. And I'm gonna just bring it up. Um, we'll bring it up to. Yeah, that's cool. I'll put a dot here, dot here. And then we'll slowly turn our depth up while that's coming down. This is gonna sound sick. Bring this up, boom, boom. And then we'll bring in all these little, uh, these open hats here and this one here and give it a little bit more energy. Oh, and then we'll copy paste this weird kick section that I created over here, the little head fake. We'll put that here before it comes back in, but we'll just get rid of this. All right, you get the idea. Ooh, I like that sample filter uh, fade out there. Yep, that works. Bring the sample filter down. All right. Now, fin finishing touch. Let's uh, run this through the analog heat. See what that sounds like. Uh, let's see, I got this just chilling here. Dun, 
My bad dog whistle. So see, now that bass line is super loud. Let's bring that down. Cool. And then let's also throw a little limiter on here. Oh yeah, because we're clipping. Look at that, we're jumping up like crazy. I mean, hey, we got pretty far, right? This is pretty good. We've been here long enough. You know what? I, real quick, before I go, I just need to audible for this. Actually, you know what? I can just grab this section, right? Nah. I think it sounds good with this filter kind of open up. There it is. I think that's a little better. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, yeah, just had some fun arranging this track and hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below or subscribe if you haven't yet. Both of those are free, but it's all good if you can't. Anyway, I appreciate you, my friend, more than you know, and I hope to see you again next week. And until then, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. This bass needs to be worked on. There's something about it. It's just too, too loud. Maybe it's just a compressor that just needs to kind of squash it up a little bit.